when I say I'm not anti-everything, I'm probably anti quite a lot, but I think that that's all you hear about, whether it's climate change or the economy and everything, it's about what is wrong. And why I think art is the vision, there needs to be a vision for the future where this is what we can do rather than what we can't do. And I think that will drive us forward. Um, so, yeah, beyond money, I'm not sure about new value systems in the world without currency. It may be for you youngsters, currency with all your digital watches and stuff. But if you live back in Lewis, where there are lots of people who are, some of them even retired, and then currency is what they're used to, and they are a bit shocked and confused about all this, I'll call it technology, but I'm sure that um, other people have different ways to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about... Um, what we can do about the Lewis Pound, which has been going for over 10 years now, uh, a bit about climate change. And one of the interesting things about the previous talk was that Hydra. And I'm wondering if there's a similar book that stems not from mass impoverishment, but about climate change. There'll be another book about homelessness. The danger of that is they'll start conflicting and you talk about, oh, I think climate change is more important than mass impoverishment, and you won't address some of the real, real issues. Um, and then why we're doing it and it, its future and the fact there's a pun there about more than just money. Well, no, I'll let you work that out yourself. It's not original. Oh, sorry. I had a conversation with Philip about saying, um, I heard about the definition of original and I said that in the Western world, if you want something original, you do something about beyond money and talk about you know, digital wallets and things like that. If you can go to an indigenous community, they would say, right, origin is back to nature, and back to, you'd go backwards. So anyway, 1789, the year of the French Revolution, quite appropriate. And why we started 2000, Lewis has flooded. That's Lewis Railway Station. Now, an excuse not to be up here because of your canal at this railway station is very valid, and that was built up on embankments. Um, climate change. You mentioned 2050, about everybody would be better off. If we don't do something now about climate change, it's going to be a mute point. But that's my thing. Um, out of that, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, Transition Town Lewis, which is a, was, was formed about moving a society to a low carbon future. And I was part of the business group. And it was interesting. I went around all the businesses and um, asked them about, about climate change and their carbon footprint. And not one business, local business, had, had worked out their carbon footprint. The reassurance was that the local district council had. So there is hope for the future on that side. Um, one of the members of the group had a chat with the Brighton Argos, not even in Lewis, and was talking about local currency, because Totnes had just launched, and was saying, we're thinking of it. And then the headlines in the Brighton Argos was that Lewis is going to launch his own currency. We had just had one meeting about it, and we weren't going to. But then we thought, oh, well, we've got this publicity. Let's do it. So we did. It is, this is as close to graphs as you're going to get. You're going to get some images and some words, but, but unfortunately not graphs. The, the theory behind the Lewis Pound is that the money you spend in local independent stores, most of that money stays in Lewis. And therefore, if you want a resilient society, you need to have that money to, to grow, and then you move forward out of a sense of abundance. If you spend money in chain stores and supermarkets, most of that money goes out. That's what the Lewis Pound's about. And I'll say this now about, about research. Um, I took a Lewis Pound to the University of Sussex because I thought, we're doing something, and we think it's interesting, but we're not quite sure what it is and how it's worked. And there was a, a, the director of sustainability at Sussex University, and I gave him a Lewis Pound and said, you know, this is on your doorstep. Why don't some of your, your students and projects do research, or even your academics? And he looked at it, and for several minutes, he said nothing. And then he said, it's too complicated. Is it, is it economics? Is it business? Is it the society? Is it anthropology? Is it... So anyway, so we have very little research done, done on it. How it works, you take your sterling, change it to Lewis Pounds, spend it in a local shop, the local shop use other local suppliers, and then sometimes they exchange it back for sterling if they need to because of we're in a complementary. Actually, I'll come back in a minute. And then it goes around in, in circles. Um, that's the resilience for you. 
Uh, good, okay, right. Sorry, let's do this, next slide. It is a circular economy. Now, I know most of you, when you talk about the circular economy, it's much more about product-led and zero waste and cradle-to-cradle and things like that. But it is interesting about how it builds up connections within a local community. Um, 2008, we launched. It was launched at the... I think Northern Rock had run, and we had set TV stations from seven different countries. We were, had press from all of them. We had coverage in most, most of the national newspapers. And you may recognise me, my one national TV appearance. There were two headlines on that day. Lewis launches its own currency, and Lehman Brothers go bust. <laughs> Timing in life is everything. That's OK. But that was, was quite something. Anyway. Um, so I'm going to race through this. I started doing a talk at the Royal College of Art about design. So I'm going to race through some of the things. This is our design. Tom Paine, because he's a radical, and he wrote about um, common sense and the rights of man, aka woman nowadays. But he had lots of good things to say. Happened that he helped the Americans win, the, you know, lost our colony there, if you're on that sort of thing, and the American War of Independence, and he was in the, the, the National Assembly for France. So he's a bit of a hooligan. And then we had to things that everybody related to, which was um, the, the Lewis Castle. So it had a sense of identity, a sense of connection. We talk about no currency. If the only identity is you and your Apple for iPhone or watch or whatever, where's your sense of community? Where's your sense of identity? Um, yeah, very colourful and very well designed. Fronts all the same to the second issue. Ah, just so you know, we launched as a trial for a year. We printed 10,000 notes. On, that was the launch was on the Wednesday. By Friday, there was not one pound. No. I went around all the local shops I might have taken them, and there were 12 Lewis pounds. I could have bought 12 Lewis pounds. The rest had gone. So a group of volunteers who just set up managed to get funding to print 10,000, suddenly had to find more money from nowhere and print 30, 40, 50,000 pounds extra to be able to do it. So the next year, we had a second issue. We had local children design the first two notes, um, something about the, the creative side of, of Lewis, which is the, the middle one. We were launched an, um, an eco-centre in, in Lewis, and then, of course, there's Lewis Bonfire. Five years later, we wanted a new issue, and for the designers amongst you, my brief to the designer was, I want the same but different, and I said, why don't you put a white stripe across it or something like that? And the creative thing you may see on the bottom of the front page is gone from a colour to white. That's all he did. So that was, that's there, the new notes. And then let's go on to why we did it. Celebrate the Battle of Lewis, 750 years. And there's a musical pop group came to do to Lewis and Mumford and Sons. We launched a special issue for there, and we thought, yes, we can do these things. Now, this is interesting for me, because I'm also director of ESCO, which is a community energy group. Ten years ago, Lewis, um, uh, part of that transition town, Lewis, the energy group set up community energy and put solar panels on Harvey's Brewery and and um, some various other schools. If you ever wonder why we're doing the Lewis Pound, just think about every time you guys turn the switch on, money goes out of your home and normally your community. If you've got solar panels on your roof, every time you turn the switch on, you're keeping money in. It's that simple. And so, so one, this may relate to what we heard before. I heard yesterday about the three Ds of community energy, which I think applies to what Lewis Pound is trying to do. We want to decarbonise Lewis. We want to decentralise Lewis. And we want to democratise Lewis. There are three Ds. And I think that, for me, sums up a lot of what we're, we're trying to do. Um, it's a triple bottom line. We mentioned about the circle economy and shop local. And I have to say, one of the weird headlines about, somebody took a photograph, because I do a market store one, once a month, was um, the positive alternative to Trump's protectionism. So think about what we're trying to say about keeping it local. It's not just us being trying to be Little England, because we still drink tea and coffee. We don't grow much of it in the UK. But we want to engage, we want to move forward out of a sense of abundance. Environmental, and this has been a struggle, how do you get that silent voice outside about climate change? And yes, it's about reducing food miles, about seasonal produce, that's great. And we're still struggling to 
work out what we can do, how we can we make money work for the environment as well. But social, it is community-led what we're trying to do. One of the things we're doing is, um, it's, it's called, it's called a donate a drink. So you can go to the depot, which is a local film cinema, buy a cup of coffee or your, your pint of Harvey's and say, and I want to donate a drink. Three pounds of that gets given to the Lewis Pound. We collect it all up and give it to people who go to the food banks. Lewis, one of the wealthiest towns in the country, has got three food banks. Um, it's also educational. I mean, you know, why am I here? To try and say, look, this is what we do. If you want to take something from it, you're very welcome. But it's for ed education. That's what we're trying to do. We don't have the resources to go to schools, but at least we have the resources to come and, and speak to you guys. Um, one of the things, and you can tell I'm not an artist or designer, um, I had to ask myself, why are we doing this? And therefore, what is money? And it was about health, wealth, and happiness. So this is my effort to say, you know, what really matters, you know, fresh air, good food and clean water with family and friends and fun. Well spent locally, stays within, in chains, goes out of Lewis. And basically, that's my little picture. And it's really about making connections. That's what the Lewis Pound is, is about. And of course, you know, Thomas Paine there had to say it's common sense, because mm -hmm. it is, really. So um, out of all these things, I think I'll just say that what we're trying to do in, in Lewis and other people doing local currencies is link value, or we want to value values along with value. And my, one of my previous incarnations was working for um, uh, CDP, if any of you have heard of it, they're, they're a, the Carbon Disclosure Project that works on behalf of institutional investors and had a, signed up about half the world's assets under management and on their behalf asked listed businesses what they're doing about, about climate change. And this was all about the principles of responsible investing and the SRI. And somebody drew this Venn diagram, this circle, and had value and values, although it's something new and original. Original, sorry, that's that word again. <laughs> um, so yeah, so back to the, the, the RCA. We design for both money and love. That's what we're about. The future. We started with the electronic side of things, and that was, was an, an online version. And we used something called Droplet. It was funded by the EU. And because of bonkers Brexit, sorry, that's my political view, um, then they lost their funding. So we had to stop. And Peso, in, in you know, half, I don't know how much of, you know, in, in Kenya and in Africa, there's so many people. It's, it's all on mobile phone banking. Yeah, that's owned by Vodafone. That's hardly a local, even though you think you're doing it locally. And it's about a means of exchange rather than a store of value. Um, alternative currency. One of the big decisions we had to make is that did we want to be alternative or complementary? And we decided because we want to engage with people, we wanted to be complementary <coughs> rather than alternative. And it may be that that was, I don't know if that's a right or wrong thing to do. I spoke to somebody who's the chief economist of Bear Stearns, so I have to take what he says with a pinch of salt, and talk about the um, you know, financial crisis. And I said, you know, there, there could be another financial crisis. And he said, it's not if, it's when. So if that's the case, hopefully that Lewis, just on its own, may be in a stronger position to move forward. But, you know, we don't, we're not isolated. We want to work with others. So, anyway. So we're more than just... Money. Oh, yeah, you mentioned Mark Carney. This is quite, for me, it was quite interesting. This is this year, this month, rather. Companies that fail to respond to climate change, that's my issue, will go bankrupt without question. When we talk about the profit motive, we think, yeah, we can just dump stuff and not take account of the externalities. Now we have to take account of our externalities, and that's my view of what he's saying. Climate change is out there, and if we want to be in existence in 2050, in the future, we have to take account of these things, not just dismiss it and get somebody else to pick up the pieces. He then, a few months ago, said, capitalism is part of the solution to tackling climate change. Now, that could be a debatable point, so that's up to you. Are we, you know, where are we on this market fundamentalism? Where does capitalism fit into that? I'm not the economist. Oh, and before I come on to that, because this is the most important bit of the whole thing, 
Um, when I did my sort of study, somebody said, I, was I an economist? I said, no. But the guy who taught me economics said, economics is incredibly dangerous. Economic, economists are incredibly dangerous. They give you a theory, and that goes into fact, and people can either gain or suffer from that fact. He said, the best thing to do is take two economic theories, preferably the opposite, and work with those together before you make your decision, which I thought was quite interesting. Now, you've got capitalism, you've got climate change, you've got Einstein. We can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we use when we create them. Now, we spoke about the, um, what the definition of being original means and about creativity and things like that. I was just thinking of another word for that, about trying to be radical. Well, that means exactly the same thing. It means going back, back to the roots. And I was just thinking of, you know, to reinvent the wheel. You know, that, that means, you know, we don't have to, let's do something else. Well, no, let's reinvent the wheel and see what the wheel is trying to do. And hopefully that's what you're trying to say, and hopefully that's what our next speaker was trying to say. So thank you for listening.